Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. I am still in the mood for spring, and so in today's episode, I have some beautiful, easy spring DIYs for you. It is part of a spring collaboration, so watch later for more information on that. On this channel, I like to do crafting, DIYs, dupes, and thrift flips. If that's something that you enjoy, I would love if you would consider subscribing. And if you do like what you see today, I would love if you would give this video a thumbs up. But let's get started. For this project, I'm using one of these large Dollar Tree tag signs that were in at Christmas time. I think they have them for all holidays though. I'm just cutting some craft paper down to size because I'm going to put this on the front of the sign, which is going to become the back of my sign. So I'm just going to cover up this glitter and everything with the craft paper so I don't have to worry about sanding that off or painting or anything. Now I just put some hot glue around the edges and then I just firmly press down to make sure that that is nice and secure. After I've done all of the edges, I just trim that excess off and then file the edges so it's a nice crisp look. Now I am taking a page out of one of the Dollar Tree calendars. And the nice part about this is you could use this for any holiday with any of the pages. I do just give this sign a coat of white paint because you will see a little bit of the excess of the sign sticking out. So I paint over the whole sign so it's consistent in color. So so after I get that all done, I'm just going to take my regular purple glue stick. You guys know I love this stuff. I have yet to have a problem with any project that I've used it on, so I just keep using it because it works. I very liberally put this on, and you can see that purple color does start to fade almost immediately as you put it on. And I just make sure I get where the edges and everything go. And if you get a little outside of the edge, it's okay because it's gonna dry clear and you can wipe it with a baby wipe to get it off if you can still see any of like the sheen or anything. I just use my Mod Podge roller there to make sure that it is all nice and smooth as I can anyway. I mean, it is paper, so it will kind of wrinkle a little bit. It's a thinner paper on those calendars. And then I'm just going to make some little... Um, faux wood lines to kind of match the paper there. Now I know this paint doesn't match the paper exactly so you could be more exact if you want. I am going to put some florals at the top so I didn't really worry about it but I just color in some faux wood grain so if you do see it it kind of blends and I just take a little bit of white paint on my brush and gently go over those lines to make them fade a little bit and it really does blend extremely well. So I'm just putting a little twine hanger at the top of my little tag here and I decided it would be really cute to have some beads on the hanger so I just use a little bit of painter's tape on the end and I just go ahead and string beads on each side and then tie it off in the middle. So using various florals that I have I am just going to make a little swag to go on the top of this. I just use what looks springy and make sure that it's even on both sides and then I just tie it off in the middle with a little bit of jute twine. I have this darling Pitberry that I got at Hobby Lobby in there. It was actually in their ribbon section. So I bought it when the ribbon was on sale, but I thought it would be cute in there. So I just slide the little wire into the middle there. I thought that just added kind of a fun little textural element there. And I did make a finger bow just by wrapping jute twine around my finger, maybe like 10 to 15 times and then tying it off in the middle. So I just glue that in the middle of my little swag there. And then I'm just going to glue this onto the top of the sign. I do want my sign to look faded, so I dry brush some white paint over the uh, calendar page there. You can see how fun that looks and the good texture. This is completely optional. I just go around the edge with some elephant chalk paint and then go over the picture a little bit too, just to have that distressed look because I love that. Here is the finished product, you guys. What do you guys think of this? I decided to hang it up here to show you with the little beaded hanger on there. I think this turned out so cute and such a fun idea to do with those dollar store calendar pages. Today's video is part of a spring collaboration with all of these amazingly talented creators. There's going to be a link down in my description box as well as pinned in my comments for the playlist. You're going to see all of these creators create spring DIYs and you are going to love everything you see. They are all so talented and I am excited for you to watch. So that link will be again down in my description box and pinned in my comments. I just love coming up with different ways to decorate these little house shapes that are so in right now. So I just use this little bluish, it's like a bluish green agave, I think is what it said there, paint. And I put a bunch of school glue over the front side of this and then I just stuck it down onto the paper. And now I am just cutting that off and I'll just take my little finger sander or emery board and just file off in a downward motion to make those lines, the edges look really crisp and clear. 
Now I'm taking this cute little cactus pot from Dollar Tree and I'm just painting the pot to be white because I want it to match my project that I'm doing. You probably leave it the way it was would be fine. I just wanted to kind of customize it a little bit. And I had this burlap ribbon that I'm putting on here. And as I was putting it on, I thought it looked really cute to have like a little crease on the front here. So I'm just wrapping a little bit of twine around to make that little crease there. And then I'll just tie that off. Now I'm just gonna glue this ribbon down in the back. So you can see, I just do a line of glue here to get that base part of the ribbon down. And then to make an edge that won't fray, I'm gonna put a glue right along the very edge there and then just gently fold that over. Just be careful not to burn your fingers. And that way you'll get a nice clean line on the back and it's not the rib burlap kind of has a tendency to fray and you will not have that problem with this. And now I'm just taking some succulents that I have from Dollar Tree. And you could leave this the way it was with the cactuses. I just thought it would be really fun to glue these different succulents on here. So using a generous amount of hot glue, I just glue these on. And you just want to hold them down until they're dry. So it's going to take you just a few minutes because you do want to make sure where that succulents is so big that it, the glue is nice and dry and has a secure hold. And I have this little teeny succulents that came on a plant that I got on Amazon. And I thought that would just be cute to glue along the front of the pot there. And now I just take some dew twine tie a little bit around. It adds just another textural element there that I really like. So I just tie that around and then in the back I just tie a knot and trim the tails of that. So now I'm trying to decide. I love these little rub on transfers from Dollar Tree and I'm trying to decide if I wanted the butterfly or the little rose. I ultimately decided on the rose because I thought it matched the paper. Now obviously this these little like elements that I'm adding are completely like personal touch so if you don't like those or you wouldn't want to add those that would be completely up to you. I just thought it was really cute to have on there. So now I just take a lot of hot glue. I guess this is where I trim those tails and I just use a lot of hot glue to glue that pot down. And you can see how the pot hangs over the edge of the house by like an inch. That was how I wanted it. I wanted it to be kind of off centered there. And then of course I love to distress things. So I'm taking just a little bit of white chalk paint and dry brushing that around the edges. The white kind of stands out with that bluish color. And I also go over the front of the paper to kind of give it a little worn and faded look. I just love the way that looks. So hopefully you do too, but if not, it's definitely a step that you could skip. But I also go around the edge of the pot with some antiquing wax. This helps that little pot to stand out even more, gives it more of a 3D look. And I just really like how that ends up. And I go over the whole front of the pot with what's left on my brush as well. I absolutely love the colors of this. I love how this turns out. It would be perfect for a tiered tray or really anywhere that you just wanted a little pop of color and some greenery. I picked up this really dated frame at a thrift store maybe like a year ago and have just been waiting for the perfect project. And I have picked up a few of these little plastic stick on tiles from Dollar Tree. And I have seen a lot of pictures of like the tin, like the pressed tin like this that has been very distressed like in a frame. And I thought I would give it a try with the Dollar Tree press on tile. So let's see how it turns out. The first thing was I cut it down to size as you saw and now I am just going to cover the complete front of it in white paint and it does take a few coats. So now to address the frame I wipe it all the way down and then I am going to cover this in white paint as well and it does take two or three coats. I want it coated really really good. Now I want this frame to pop against the white of that tile that's going to be in there. So I'm going to put a decent amount of antiquing wax on my brush and kind of dab it so it's not gonna be goopy when I put it on. And I'm going to go over all of the edges of this frame. And I don't, I maybe do like two sides before I dip it back in my antiquing wax. And then I pay special attention to like the corners and stuff to make those stand out. I just felt that the frame had a very dated finish on it to begin with. And so that's why I decided to kind of paint it white and go over it. And I end up doing a lot of this antiquing wax on it because I wanted a good contrast and I liked this look a little bit better. So again, you can see I dip it in the antiquing wax and then I'm just going to go over. And as it gets lighter on your brush, you're just gonna, just gonna like press a little bit harder and it just really gives a nice finish to it. And then using this metallic acrylic paint, I am going to go over all of the raised spots. So I put it on my brush. I wipe my brush off a little bit so it's not going to be globby when I put it on. And then I'm just going over the tile and you can see all of those little raised areas it picks up on. So I go completely over the whole tile 
and then I am also going to use some elephant chalk paint to kind of bring in a little bit darker feel to it as well it the feel I'm going for is I want it to look like it was painted at one time like it was that dark steel color metal tin whatever and then like as the paint wore away years you know on those um, raised area that it looks distressed so that's the feel I'm going for and so as well as doing the elephant chalk paint and the metallic paint I also go in and dry brush a little white over it as well to kind of mute down some areas and honestly I just do that all over the whole thing until I get the feel and the look that I want between the metallic the elephant chalk paint and the white so I just peel the backing off of this tile and I just stick it directly on the mat that came into the frame. And you notice there that it wasn't quite long enough. So I did just trim a piece off from the side that I cut when I cut it down and just painted it and everything to match. So I am just using some super glue and I will just press down until that has a firm hold there and then I will just cut it to match the mat on the back. And honestly, when you're looking at it, you really cannot tell that it's there, that it's you know not one piece. And I'm just taking my staple gun and I am stapling it directly into the frame here so it's nice and secure. And oh my gosh, I love how this turned out. It is such a great layering piece to have in your decor. I just love this. And you can see here, I added a, a wreath to the frame and I just think it turns out absolutely beautiful. I would love to know your thoughts on this down in the comments. Don't forget that I'm on Instagram also. I love to meet new Insta friends, so I would love for you to come over and say hi, check out my page, and see all the latest projects that I'm working on. I'll be sure and leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. I found these little hexagon shapes at Dollar Tree last time I was there, so I picked up a couple of them because I love having them for little projects, for tiered trays, or just to add to your little vignette. They're so easy and so fun to make over. So after removing the tag on the back, I just cover the whole thing in white chalk paint. I'm also going to use one of these little galvanized flowers that you get at the crafter section at Dollar Tree as well as one of these rub on transfers of this little wreath. And I wasn't sure how this was going to look on the middle, but I think it turns out really cute. So you just rub that on with like a craft stick or something and then you just peel that back. And now I'm going to use just one of the tumbling tower blocks to glue that on to give it kind of a 3D push from that hexagon shape. And I felt like it needed something a little extra. So I have these little wooden laser cut birds that also came from Dollar tree they come in like a three pack or something so I just use a little hot glue and glue that right onto the wreath there and then to make the shape of the hexagon pop I just use a little bit of elephant chalk paint and go around and you could use whatever color antique wax whatever any dark gray and just go on all the edges now I thought it would be fun to make this two-sided so I decide to put a chalk couture transfer on the back. So I'm just using this darling little spring has sprung. It looks like a cute little flower. And I am totally new to the chalk couture world, but I am loving it. And I'll leave a link to my chalk couture store down in my description box if you wanna check anything out there. But it, it is just kind of like screen printing. Like it is actually so satisfying when you get this on and then you can watch this peel here. I just love that and I love the negative space of the words on there. I just think this turns out so cute. And of course, I do distress around the edges, so on the backside to match the front. And you can see how cute that looks. The spring has sprung. And then I love this side with all of these little 3D elements. But this way from both sides you see it, that sign is absolutely darling. You could even have the one side out for spring and leave this other side out year round. This is more of a hack than a DIY, but I love this and I feel like it's worth sharing. So I shop Hobby Lobby for their clearance and I got this sign for like $1.50, I think it says there, which, you know, is 25 cents more than Dollar Tree now, but it's beautiful. It's framed and it's a decent size and I love it. I'm just taking a little bit of paint to paint over the words on this because I am going to put one of the Dollar Tree wall stickers on here and I just don't want those words to show through. I did decide as I was doing this that I thought I better color all of the design on the back there or on the sign there so it wouldn't show through. So I do just go over and cover all of that pink ombre that was on there. And then I just dry it with my heat tool, make sure that it is all nice and dry. And then these stickers are two parts. So they're like split down the middle. So I just peel the first one off and I center it and kind of eyeball it that's I'm big on eyeballing everything and I just rub it down once I know that I've got it where I need it to be and then I just match up this other side and then you'll just kind of make sure that that seam is very close you know and matched up there I even get my brayer out and roll over it that way 
I have done this hack so many times, like especially for my kids' rooms to get, like they love the stickers at Dollar Tree and I'm like, I don't love to stick them on my wall. I'm just fixing the back here so that paper lays down flat on the back. But look at how beautiful this is. I mean, it's, it's kind of custom, but Hobby Lobby has some great clearance items and sometimes they're not necessarily what you would hang in your home, but this way you can definitely customize it. It's so simple and so easy. I had so much fun making each and every one of these DIYs. I absolutely love the color palette. It definitely has a very fresh and spring vibe. I would love to know down in the comments if you had a favorite from today's video and what that was. This one right here, I think wins it for me this time. I just absolutely love how that frame turned out and how it looks like a tin tile that's in there. I just, my it has my heart, <laughs> but I love them all. I mean, they are all so beautiful and I will definitely be using them all around my home to give me that wonderful spring vibe. I do wanna remind you about the playlist. Click that down in my description box. It is full of some very talented and amazing creators and you are definitely going to be inspired. As always, I wanna remind you to be safe, be smart, be nice, be happy. Choose to have a good day because you are amazing. Thanks so much guys, we'll see you next time. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, here's another one that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.